Hey guys, welcome to another episode of the Coffee Course. Today we're dealing with another classic. We're going to be talking about the mocha pot. We probably all have one of our houses. We probably have been using it wrong. It's a very simple, straightforward way to use this to get a quality cup of coffee. One that won't be too dark, too bitter, and is actually quite quick. So we'll talk first about grind size. Most machines will be set to mocha pot on their grinder. I prefer to take that back maybe one little half notch or a notch more towards rough. There will be talk about recipes as well. We'll talk a bit more about that later on. You're very much physically constrained by the size of the mocha pot that you have. The important thing to note, the amount of water that you can use is whatever fits below this particular valve. The amount of coffee that you can use is whatever fits in the basket. This is not a basket that you're gonna be compressing or tamping. It's gonna be a loose fit coffee in here. So, the first thing you need to do, start with quality coffee as always. Grind your coffee, weigh it into your little basket, level it, don't tamp it, and then get your water on. So as I mentioned, when you're filling your coffee, just keep it loose. You can base it on a ratio. So what you can do is see how much water fits below the valve of your mocha pot, and then base that ratio of how much ground coffee you use. So for example, you're constrained physically by how much coffee can fit in the basket. So use the volume of water that you can fit in this pot based on your ratio and recipe to determine how much ground coffee to put in here. We'll discuss that in a bit more detail with Tom at the end of the show. A lot of people make the mistake of starting off with cold water in their mocha pot. You don't want to do that. The more cold water that's in the pot, the longer it's going to be in contact with the coffee, the more bitter that's going to be. Start with freshly boiled hot water, 90 to 93 degrees in the base of the mocha pot. Make sure you bring cloth or a kitchen towel or something. Don't burn your hand. Fill to the valve, tighten it on, get it on the stove. Let's do that now. So, best way to do this is to fill straight from the kettle into the mocha pot. Make sure you get to a level just below the valve. It's easier if you start on the cloth, then Pop in your coffee, careful of the steam of course, in here. And that means that you can now put your mocha pot straight on, screw it on, and you have something to grip it with. You'd be surprised how quickly you can forget about this and burn yourself. So once your mocha pot is ready to go on the stove with the hot water, tightened. Tighten it well, don't tighten it overly strong. Remember you're going to generate heat and you do have to remove it afterwards. Start your stove. The process should take about a minute and a minute and a half. Keep a close eye on your mocha pot. Brew with your lid open so you can see when the coffee starts to transit through. And then when you hear that little hiss at the end, with the end of the brewing, pop your lid down. And then we'll show you what to do next. So as you near the end of the brew, the coffee is coming through quite rapidly now. Turn off the heat, close your lid, wait for the brew to finish, and then take your coffee over to the sink, run this part of the pot under some cold water to stop the brewing and the extraction. So as we said, once the coffee has brewed, you hear that haze, you close the lid for the final couple of seconds of the brew, bring it to the sink, run it under cold water to stop the extraction. Then, with your cloth to hand, pop the mocha pot back on top of there. You will be removing this later on. This may still have some residual heat. It's a nasty way to get a burn if you haven't cooled it down sufficiently. Pour it off from the mocha pot as quickly as possible, just in case there is any residual heat. And then, we would recommend, as soon as you can, stripping apart the mocha pot again and cleaning it thoroughly. One important thing to note about a mocha pot is that it makes an incredibly hot cup of coffee. So be very careful, don't drink it straight away, leave it a bit to cool down, maybe add a drop of milk, whatever your preference is, but it will be piping hot when it comes out of the mocha pot. Very soon we're gonna do an episode that shows you how to froth your own milk at home. So this is actually a great method of substituting your, not quite latte or cappuccino, but your milk craving for when the coffee shops are closed. Enjoy. 
Okay guys, so that was Mocha Posh, and once again, I'm joined by Tom. Tom, thanks for joining me. Yeah, how, how are you Jeff? How's things this week? Good, thanks, good. Um, so it's not a, a process that I'm uh, very familiar with, I haven't done a lot of it in the past, but I know that you have some thoughts on it. Yeah, so I think it's in Ireland, or in, as a college student, it was a thing that was in everybody's house in first year in college I think it was the first thing I saw when I opened up the press so I used it a little bit through college and I was always questioning really how to use it how what was the optimum way to use it and it seems to be different all across the board the main things I suppose to take away is obviously your fresh coffee fresh ground beans filtered water on top of this though when when using our water we don't want to be putting cold water into the bottom compartment that's the first thing it's it's not like a rice or potatoes that we're trying to bring up to the boil we want to keep the least amount of time of the water touching the beans as possible really good tip is first off to boil your kettle pour the water in at this stage the water will have the least amount of time touching the coffee so it should come through at about you know a minute a minute and a half since people think mocha pots are home espresso kits but they're not they're between filtered coffee and espresso so your grind size has to be adjusted accordingly so we tend to grind our coffee a much good bit coarser than espresso it's never going to be espresso so you want to grind it to a coarser setting um, another tip is it's since it's not espresso you don't tamp it so we're not pushing down on the coffee at all it's loose you're not compressing it whatsoever keep the lid of the of the coffee open you want to be able to judge how it's coming out you you don't want the coffee to be spilling out and bursting out you want it to be coming out at a gradual time and when it, when the coffee reaches about two-thirds of the way up you just want to close it take it off the heat and then run the bottom compartment underneath the, the cold tap it's like when you you want to stop the extraction at that point really don't you exactly it's like you don't want to overcook a boiled egg you know you might put it in cold water afterwards as to not cook it further you want to stop the extraction I think though that's the three things there really you've talked about is where everyone goes wrong. They probably brew with the lid closed. They probably try to either tamp down the coffee or think it needs to be like of an espresso kind of grind. And then they also start with cold water, which is going to make the coffee more bitter. Yeah, exactly. Other thing is, and I just remember now the most probably important thing is, I don't think I've ever gone to a house and I'm not being caked in, in <laughs> what people think are probably tannins or something in the inside. That's burnt coffee. So, if I went to your coffee shop, Jeff, and I see you didn't clean, clean your 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 seals and your porta filters, it's that I'm tasting old coffee that's been sitting there. That's not burnt, but that's the leftover sediment that's been sitting there. So, with your mocha pot at home, you have to clean it. And when I mean clean it, you have to take out the seals, take apart everything. Um, you want it to be. It's not your granny's teapot. You have to be cleaning it top to toe. So you're getting just the extraction out of the coffee you put out of that fresh coffee you put into the compartment so it's really important to clean your to clean your mocha pot at home and i guess as we said even though it's not home espresso for anyone who might be craving to be able to add a bit of a frothed milk or something to their beverage at home it's probably the best option as regards that if you don't have a dedicated espresso machine exactly. yeah in fact i came across an interesting method of making some uh frothed milk at home earlier on we might touch on that in another episode using a french press yeah 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 it's great it's a lovely way to um it's quite effective it is yeah and you can actually do latte art with it i tried out once or twice with my dad at home actually it's terrible but... so that's pretty much it for <laughs> <laughs> so that's pretty much it for mocha pot i think tom unless uh, anything else springs to mind the moment no no i think we covered pretty much everything jeff yeah cool so that wraps up another episode of the coffee course thanks again for joining us this week even though we're doing it remotely again uh, I've been Jeff from Tree Bark Store. And I'm Tom from Pangea Coffee Culture. Thanks, guys. Thanks, guys. <laughs>